Well, tonight we're going to do something a little different than what we normally do. Normally on Wednesday nights we just have a, a devotion, and I normally intend for it to be just an uplifting time because it's the middle of the week. All of us are out and around the world, and uh, we all need to get our batteries recharged, I think, in the middle of the week before we go back out into the, uh, the battlefield. But tonight I'm going to do something a little different just because of what's coming up tomorrow. Tomorrow, as you probably already know, there's supposed to be the first total solar eclipse that we've had since 2017, so it's been about seven years. And so I want to present something to you tonight uh, that will, I think, just further demonstrate to you that the modern, uh, the modern view of cosmology, science, uh, that is put out there by NASA and the rest of the talking heads is not and cannot be correct. Uh, and it... it it doesn't necessarily prove what we believe, but it definitely disproves what they believe and shows that their model is not and cannot be accurate. So I'm going to show you a few things. Uh, we're going we're to start with a PowerPoint presentation up here uh, on the television. And then after we do that, we're going to do our own little experiment. And I'll show you a little bit of what, what it is that we're talking about. Uh, you'll have a good idea after we go through the PowerPoint presentation. But because I'm recording this and we'll make it available for some other folks to be able to see that are not here, um, I'm going to do like I did when I've gone through several series on Sunday nights before. I will not take questions or comments during the presentation, but at the end, I will definitely make time for questions or comments if you have any. So the first slide up here shows the size of the moon. According to modern science, the moon is approximately 2,000 some odd miles across in diameter or about 27% the size of the earth. So there you see a visual display of what modern science says the world looks like and what modern science, I think somebody else is coming in, and what the moon looks like uh, in comparison to each other based on size. The second slide here is the size of the sun. I just realized I need to turn my... Okay. The size of the sun. According to modern science, the sun is approximately 869,919 miles in diameter, dwarfing both the earth and the sun. So there you see in the center a picture, uh, a visualization of what they say the size of the sun is. And then you have a little dot in the very middle, they say, is approximately the size the Earth is compared to the Sun. And then another little dot that's really just a little pinprick over on the right-hand side, they say, is approximately the size of the Moon in comparison to the Sun. So trying to just get you to get some things in perspective before we talk about the actual eclipse itself. Here, of course, is... Uh, all of the so-called planets in the solar system, at least they were when, when I was coming along. I think they've dropped Neptune off the, off the solar system map as a planet. But the distance of the Earth and the Sun, according to modern science, the Earth is approximately 93 million miles from the Sun. You have probably learned that in ninth grade uh, physical science class or somewhere along the line. But they say the sun is 93 million miles away from the earth. It's almost a million, uh, uh, almost a million miles wide, they say, and, and 93 million miles from the earth. Here's a depiction showing or referencing the distance of the moon from the earth. According to modern science, the moon is approximately 240,000 miles from the earth. Depending on whether you look at the NASA site or some other government uh, sites or, or other science, academic sites, they'll say it's somewhere around 235, 238,000. Uh, I just rounded off approximately 240,000 miles from the Earth. So basically they're saying the moon is about a quarter of a million miles from the Earth and the sun is 93 million miles from the Earth. Uh, amazing coincidences. According to modern science, the sun is approximately 400 times larger than the moon. But, by an amazing coincidence, the sun is also approximately 400 times farther away from the earth 
than the moon, causing them to appear exactly the same size. Uh, what a coincidence. There are so many coincidences uh, in the, the modern science view of cosmology that their coincidences all added up in this Baptist preacher's opinion would take more faith to believe in all those coincidences than to just believe that there was a, a, a God who is a creator, who is an intelligent designer. But nevertheless, they say that the sun and the moon appear to us from the vantage point of the earth, they appear to be the same size because the sun is 400 times larger, but it's 400 times farther away as well. A solar eclipse. A solar eclipse is defined as the moon moving directly between the sun and the earth, thus blotting out the light from the sun. So here you've got the sun, here you've got the earth, and the moon moves in between there, and because it appears to be the same size as the sun, appears to be, quote unquote, uh, it totally blocks out if it's in the right place or you're in the right place, totally blocks out perfectly the exact size of the sun so that you get a total solar eclipse. The shadow of the moon on the earth. Now, this is what they say is going to happen tomorrow during this total solar eclipse. According, again, to modern science, the shadow of the moon on the earth during a solar eclipse actually appears smaller than the size of the moon because, number one, the sun shining behind it is larger than the moon, and number two, the sun's rays shine diagonally on all sides of the moon to reduce the darkest part of the moon's shadow to no more than about 110 miles across. So let me explain the significance of this. The significance of this is that uh, if the moon is casting a shadow on the earth and they've already told us what the supposed path tomorrow of the the moon is going, uh, the, the eclipse is going to be going across Mexico and across these United States. And they've told us that the, the path of that, if you follow the total eclipse, those who can see a total eclipse, that path is about 110 miles wide tomorrow. Now, in 2017, that path of total eclipse they said was only about 61 miles wide, but tomorrow they're saying because of where the, the, uh, the earth is going around the sun in their solar system model, that the moon's shadow is going to be bigger, about 110 miles wide. Now, for those of us here in Georgia, if you're trying to get a gauge of how wide that is, 110 miles uh, is uh, about half the width of Georgia if you are in Macon. So it would go about from the Alabama line to Macon or about from Macon to Savannah. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how wide they say the path is. But remember, they say the diameter of the moon itself is over 2,000 miles wide. But it's only going to cast a shadow about 100, 110 miles wide. So here's the problem for... Their, their dilemma, they have to create some explanation for why the shadow of the moon is going to be so much smaller than the actual size of the moon, according to their model. Because as you know, most of the time, uh, if something casts a shadow, it's going to cast a shadow smaller than it is? No. It's going to cast a shadow larger than it is. I mean, We've all seen shadows on those uh, scary cartoons when we were kids growing up with Daffy Duck and Elmer Fudd where uh, they're, one of them standing in front of the spotlight and uh, he thinks there's a monster behind him on the wall, but it's just a big shadow of himself on the wall because uh, light shining directly on any object normally is going to cast a shadow behind that object either the same size as the object or larger than the object, not smaller than the object. So they've got to explain away why the sun, uh, sun is going to be 
uh, while the moon's going to be casting a smaller shadow on the earth than the actual size of the moon. So if you're looking at this diagram up here on the television screen, you'll see that they are saying that the reason for that is that the sun's rays are going to be shining from the sun, not only straight at the moon, but also coming diagonally from the top and from the bottom of the sun, uh, so that it actually is going to narrow down the, uh, the shadow of the moon, so that the, the main part of the moon's shadow is going to be very small. You'll still see a larger shadow on the earth, and that's where people will see a partial eclipse, but the, the main shadow of the moon is going to be smaller than the actual diameter of the moon. It's what they call the, the umbra, the smaller part of the shadow. And then the, the larger part of the shadow that's not as dark is going to be, it's what they call the penumbra. But the umbra is the part that's smaller than the moon. And that's what normally you would expect to be the same size as the object or larger than the object. So let's go from there. Here it is again. This is a different diagram, but showing the same effect. The sun not only shining directly on the moon, but coming in from the top and the bottom too, and kind of wrapping around so that it's uh, zeroing out part of the, the moon shadow above and below the moon, and creating that small little circle of a shadow that's only a fraction of the size of the moon. But wait just a minute. There are a couple of problems with this explanation. NASA and modern science must come up with some explanation as to why the shadow of the moon is just barely more than 100 miles in diameter. Let's consider a couple of things. First of all, let's go back to kindergarten. The first problem is that if the sun is actually a ball of burning gas, a huge ball of burning gas like modern science claims it is, the rays of the sun would never shine directly in the directions that NASA's diagram shows. We'll go back to that in just a minute. Even a child in kindergarten knows how to draw the direction of the sun's rays. They are always away from the center of the sun. Here's a child's drawing of a house and some trees or flowers and the sun. <coughs> You know, even a child knows how to draw a picture of a sun with sun's rays. Uh, the sun is a circle, and then the rays are all going out from the center of the sun. They're not going at other angles, and they're all going out from the center of the sun. Well, first of all, I have to say, for those that maybe haven't been here when we went through our study on biblical cosmology, uh, the sun is not a star. The Bible makes it clear the sun is something totally different than a star. So number one, the sun is not a star. Number two, stars are not huge burning balls of gas millions and billions and trillions of miles away. That's not what stars are. If you're not sure what stars are, either go back through our study on biblical cosmology or just get your own Bible and a concordance down. Look up all the references to stars. Read them all in line and you'll get a good idea of what a star is, but it's not a huge burning ball of gas somewhere out in outer space. But even if you believe the sun is a large ball of burning gas, whatever it is, if you choose to believe that, there's still a problem here. Because a ball emitting light in every direction, the only part of those rays that are going to be hitting the, the moon directly are the ones coming straight out of the ball facing that direction. The rest of the rays are going off in other directions away from the object, which in this case is the moon. So here's problem number one. The left diagram shows what the rays of the sun actually do. Uh, the rays uh, of the sun they say are what is on the right hand side and they say that because they have to make it that way it has to be that way or their model doesn't work um, so they are you know in some respects I would say less intelligent than a kindergarten you 
kindergartner, even a kindergartner understands the direction that the, la- the rays of light go off of a ball. But that's not the biggest problem. We're not at the biggest problem yet. But wait, there's a bigger problem. Problem number two. If what modern science says is true, and the sun is 400 times farther away, causing the sun to appear the same size as the moon from the earth, then the sun wouldn't be shining around the ball of the moon anyway. Even if the rays uh, are going at those different angles, it still wouldn't be able to shine around the moon if from the vantage point of earth, if the sun and the moon are the same size because of perspective. So there's still a problem. NASA and modern sun worshipers want to have their cake and eat it too. In reality, their lies end up coming back to bite them just like all liars. And there you see there's a picture of the sun and the moon appearing to be the same size, which is what we view with our eyes from earth. And there you have a serpent swallowing his tail, which is a symbol for Satan. And uh, all of those who practice this particular Illuminist thinking, at the root of all of it is Satan and Luciferianism. But this is their biggest problem. Because from the vantage point of earth, the sun doesn't appear to be larger and shining around the moon. They're the same size, hence the reason there's a complete solar eclipse. That's the big problem. Then there's this. Throw away all the math and physics and all the previous discussion for a minute and just trust what your own senses tell you. Trust what your own eyes and your own logical brain tell you. There is no way that the moon or any other object casts a shadow smaller than its actual size when in direct light, when the light is the same size as whatever the object is and the light is behind it. Shadows might be larger, but they're not going to be smaller. So you see a a rendition there of the cartoon I was talking about. That's what we've all seen for ourselves. When a light is behind an object, um, the object is either, its shadow that is cast is either the same size as the object or the shadow is larger than the object. We don't see it the other way around. And with this case, they're telling us that from our perspective on earth, the sun is the same size as the object that is moving in front of it. Hence, there would be no way for their illustration to make the, sun, uh, the, the moon's shadow appear smaller than it is. Rather, it would always appear the same size or larger than it is. Here's my last slide for tonight. Modern science is wrong. Modern science is wrong about cosmology, just like it's wrong about the Big Bang Theory, the theory of evolution, which teaches that man evolved from apes, and a whole lot more, too. Why does NASA and modern science want you to believe in fairy tales? Because they don't want you to believe either God or His Word. They say that what you believe is a fairy tale. The reality is what they believe is a fairy tale with a lot more coincidences and a lot more things that can't be explained than believing that an almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God created everything. Here's our verse for tonight because we don't do anything at a uh, Baptist church without the Word of God. So here's our verse for tonight, Romans 3, 4. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. Now I know this doesn't We didn't go in tonight on all of what the Bible says about the biblical model of cosmology. That was not my purpose of tonight. I don't have time to do that tonight. not trying to do that tonight. All I'm trying to do tonight is show you that what's going to happen tomorrow is just one more example that shows that their model is not and cannot be correct. Even if someone did not necessarily believe that the biblical cosmology model was accurate, NASA's model definitely isn't right. And this is just one example of that. So now I'm going to stop with the PowerPoint presentation. And before we take our break, I want to do something a little bit different. Um, 
Brother Alex, if you'll get your calculator out on your phone. You got a calculator on your phone? I figured you did. So we, we already know that the approximate distance of the moon from the earth is about 240,000 miles, at least according to NASA. So that's about a quarter of a million miles. So we're going to say, we're going to round off and say it's a fourth of a million miles. So four of those in one million, and we know this, they say the sun is 93 million miles away. So Brother Alex, tell us what is four times 93? 372. 372. So for our purposes here, for our experiment, we're going to let... Uh, uh, we're going to let one of these be an inch. And uh, so let's divide 372 by 12. And Alex, tell me what we get there. 372 by 12? Uh, divided by 12. 31. 31. All right. So that means we need to be 31 feet away in order to kind of get an idea of what the sun's distance is from the earth. So, Brother Kevin always has his handy-dandy, trusty... Um, uh, you, no, I was going to say yardstick, not a yardstick, uh, his tape measure with him. So, Brother Kevin, if you'll come up here, and then I want to get two of our young fellas with, with young knees uh, so that they can bend a little bit come up here and help me. They already knew who they were, so they, they got right up. All right, TR, you'll need to stand over there where I was just a moment ago. Josh, let you hold that. You can go ahead and turn the flashlight on. TR, I'll let you start with that. Brother Kevin, if you, uh, I'll hold the end of that, and if you'll try to mark us off 31 feet, is this a 25 foot? Yeah. Okay, so we'll have to go a little further than this. That's 25? Okay. So let's get another six feet out of it. At the front of my foot, that crack right okay. there. There you go. All right, so, so Josh, if you'll just stay right there. Yes, sir. Actually, Kevin, if you'll stay there. Josh, come back up here for a minute. You need to get home, need the flashlight. No, sir, bring the flashlight with you. All right, so I've drawn two circles up here on the poster board. Um, TR, if you'll hold... These are some of the preacher's favorite breath mints. Uh, using this for an example. So TR, if you'll hold that right up to the circle, you'll see that's the same size as the circle that I drew. So TR, hold that a little bit away from, and let's see how the size of the circle compares. So as you see, he's only a little bit of a distance from the paper itself, and already the size of the shadow is larger than than the diameter of the object, not smaller. All right, now TR, get within one inch of that because that's approximately the distance of the moon. Now put it right on the circle. All right, so, so one inch, there you go, right there. One inch away, can you match it up with the circle? That's what I was doing. All right, one inch away, he's still, it's about the same size that, it, that the object itself is. So, so at that point, uh, it, it, you know, the shadow of the object is basically the same size as the object. Now, if you would do us a favor, Josh, go all the way back there and stand beside Brother Kevin with your flashlight. We're going to see if it does anything to the, uh, the uh, size of the shadow with you moving. All right? Moving the sun all the way back to where it should be in uh, uh, perspective and ratio here. Uh, the, si the shadow of the object doesn't change. Just because the sun is farther away, the shadow didn't change its size. It's still the same size as the object itself. All right, so Josh, you can come on back up this way for a minute. You're going to need your flashlight back on. Now, TR, I've got, uh, I'm going to change objects with you. 
I'm going to let you use the smaller object. And since it's smaller, I'm going to let you use these tweezers to kind of hold it out to the side <laughs> to keep your fingers out of the way. All right? So hold it one inch away. There you go. All right, so you see there again, uh, about an inch from the quote-unquote surface of the earth, uh, the shadow is the same size as the object itself. All right, Josh, you'll do the same thing and go all the way back there to Brother Kevin, just like you did a moment ago. Hey, <laughs> all right, again, we're going to see the exact same thing we saw with the larger object, that the shadow of this object is still roughly the same size as the object itself. Now, come back this way, Josh, and stand about even with that pole right there, and we'll change something else. Uh, this, this pole right here, I'm sorry. All right, now, now, TR, move your object towards the light just a little bit. Wow. So it's, it's still not changing much. It's getting a little bit larger. So the further that the object is away from the surface, the shadow is getting larger. But at no time did it get smaller. It's never smaller than the object casting the shadow. It's either the same size as the object or larger than the object. Now, uh, you guys can, can put those up. And Brother Kevin, you can have a seat too. Thank you all for your help. Now, the explanation that NASA, thank you, yes. the explanation that NASA and the talking heads in modern science would give, again, is that the sun is larger than the moon. And that because it's so much larger, its rays are going above and below and on the sides and around the object, making the, the shadow on the earth to be smaller than the size of the object. Well, that would be true if the object that is putting out the light was larger than the object that's casting the shadow. But when the perspective that NASA tells us that because of the sun being 93 million miles away, 400 times farther away than the moon, they appear the same size. So that's why I say NASA wants to have their cake and eat it too. They want to say that the two appear the same size, and yet they want to show some uh, cartoon illustration, a diagram where the sun is this much bigger than the moon, and yet, if we believe what they're telling us is that they, from our perspective, are the same size, and that's what we view with our eyes, then what they're explaining just doesn't hold up. In fact, that second object that TR was using and holding it in front of the poster board there, um, just to show you, it is the same exact size as the lens of this high-powered flashlight that's several thousand lumens, the brightest flashlight I could find, by the way. Um, it is the same size as the light. So as long as the object is the same size in perspective as the light, the shadow of the object that is cast will never be smaller than the object. So that leaves the question. What does that say about the actual size of the moon? Well, first of all, I think it totally says that what they say about the sun being 93 million miles away isn't true. The sun being almost a million miles in diameter isn't true. And it certainly tells us that the moon, which is uh, a lot closer than 93 million miles away, however close it is or isn't, it is definitely not 2,000 miles wide. So what we see is that our eyes and true science tells us that the size of the moon is much smaller than we've been told it is, which means that the sun is either much closer than we've been told that it is, or it too is much smaller than we've been told it is. 
and possibly both. What we're doing is reeling in all of those ridiculous numbers we've been fed that clearly couldn't be true. Everything that is is within the firmament that God created. The sun, the moon, and the stars because He put them all inside the firmament on day number four. And so I won't go any further tonight. I don't want to belabor the point, but I just want you to, to again be encouraged because I promise tomorrow all you're going to hear on every news station is how this proves the sun's 93 million miles away and, and all of these other things about secular cosmology. It doesn't prove those things. They are a lot like Hillary Clinton. Ow. And that Ow. is... Ow. <laughs> And that is the, the best way to get people to believe what you want them to believe is to just keep telling the lie over and over again. And as the Nazi party said in the 1930s in Germany, the bigger the lie, the easier it is to get people to believe it. It's amazing that that's the case, but that's just human nature. So tell it over and over again, tell it enough, and make the lie big enough and you'll get people to believe it. That's what they've done. That's what you're going to hear all day tomorrow when in fact it actually proves the exact opposite. All right, that's my presentation for tonight. So before we have our, our uh, goodies back there, anybody have any questions or comments?